Hey what's up guys, OSG here with another Best Arcades Park video and today we will be looking at the Nintendo Entertainment System. The NES is one of the most important consoles of all time and while not being loved so much over here in the UK, it's the tool of choice for most American retro gamers. I did however have an NES when I was younger and I loved it to bits. The games were so fast and arcade like and it spawned some of the biggest gaming franchises ever. I knew that this video would have some great games but to be honest a lot of these didn't actually spring the mind when I first started this list. I have to say that out of all the videos so far, this one is by far the best for gameplay. Every game on this list plays as it should and some of the games as you will see actually outdo the arcade counterpart. So without more delay let's take a look at the best Nintendo Entertainment System arcade parts ever. Kicking us off in 20th place we have Ghosts and Goblins. Ghosts and Goblins was a game that blew us away with its great graphics and ultra hard gameplay on the arcade. I can never remember getting past level 2 back in the day as it was tough as old boots. The NES version doesn't disappoint on the toughness scale and looks but the sound is something you have to excuse with its earpiece and music. The gameplay is excellent though and while not being to everyone's liking is a great port. 19th place is taken by Nark. Now this was a game that I always saw in the arcades and played a few times but never really liked it much. The NES version is held in high regards by many but as I wasn't fond of the original I find it hard to get into. That aside, as far as comparisons go it's pretty close and the gameplay is almost identical to the arcade. Russian Attack is in 18th position. This is the home version of Green Beret in the arcades. We all just know how hard that game is and in the whole most of the home parts did a good job on this game. The NES version doesn't let us down either with the same hard as Neil's gameplay and beautiful arcade looking graphics. It's a bit easier in the arcade though so if you struggle with that give this one a go it might suit you a bit better. 17th place is taken by POW. This game was in my local YMCA when I was a kid and it's a game that doesn't get much love today but as far as beat em ups go it's a classic. The two player mode is where the game shines though as in one player it's quite hard. The NES version is one of those games I mentioned in the intro but I would actually prefer playing rather than the arcade. In 16th place we have Paperboy. No need to tell everyone just how big this game was. It was absolutely everywhere back in the day, in the arcades and home ports. Some home ports were pretty dire but not on the NES. This version delivers the great package that we all loved on the arcade and is a game that I will never pass by when I see it on my ROMs list. Guerrilla Wars in 15th position. This is a game that has appeared on some bad arcade part videos as the home versions were very hit and miss. The NES version is a hit though but as it doesn't have the rotation controls handles very differently to the arcade. That being said it's still very playable and definitely one of the best home parts of this game. In 14th place we have 1943. This was a follow up to the arcade classic 1942 and in the arcades was great. The home versions of the game were a mixed bag but the NES one is thankfully good. I was going to put this higher on the list but there are a few more shoot em ups on here that just did it a little bit better. Don't let that put you off bro, this is still a solid arcade port. Thirteenth place is taken by Gladius. I recently did a Gladius comparison on my channel and it's a brilliant side scrolling shoot em up. There were so many home ports, the most I've ever covered in a comparison video and as a whole they were all good. The NES version was very good and was placed high on that list so the fact that this is in 13th just shows how good the calibre of the games are for the rest of this list. Super C is in 12th position. This was the sequel to Contra and took everything from that game and made it even harder. I don't normally include more than one game in the series in these lists but I have to make an exception in the case of Super C as it's totally awesome on the NES and it's another game that I would rather play on the home system than the arcade. In 11th place we have Rolling Thunder. Rolling Thunder was a super popular platform shooter with some really iconic music. The game was ported badly to a lot of home ports but the NES version is brilliant. Everything about the gameplay is right on this one and it also carries off the arcade music nicely too. Tenth place goes to Life Force, or as I know it, Salamander. Salamander is a spin-off from Gradius 
and it took all the good stuff from that game to another level with some really good graphics and gameplay. The NES version converted the arcade game in style, while obviously having hardware constraints, it really carries the game off well and is a solid shooter on the system. Jackal takes 9th position. Now although this isn't first, this is a find of the list for me. I recently took part in an arcade competition where we played Jackal, and although I had nearly forgotten how good it was, I fell in love with it. The NES version is right on par with the arcade, and has even put its own twist on it with the end of stage bosses. This is definitely one of my favourite NES games now. In 8th place we have Donkey Kong. I'm sure we don't need reminding of how good Donkey Kong is on the arcade. It's a game that kids still love today and never grows old. The NES version was originally going to be much higher, but I've played a lot of Donkey Kong lately and I felt that it does have some downfalls like slightly different level designs and actually missing the Pie Factory level, so it got moved down. It's a shame though because it plays so good. Seventh place is taken by Twin Cobra. This is another part from my favourite arcade shoot 'em up developer, Torplan. The game was one of the first shoot 'em ups I played on arcade, and it's a tough one, as you may expect from Torplan. The NES version is slightly watered down in terms of difficulty, but everything else is done in its own 8 bit way, and it's a super fun game to play. Bubble Bobble is in 6th place. I've said it before that there is only one real bad part of this game, and that's the Amstrad which has been rectified now, and the NES port doesn't disappoint. If you were a Bubble Bobble fan back in the day this would have more than satisfied your first for the game, as it follows the arcade version to a T. In 5th place we have Galaga. Galaga is a timeless classic from when arcades were like witchcraft. It took the Space Invaders formula to a whole new level. The NES version is almost arcade perfect and it's a game that I have now recommended to Lucas who I know is a Galaga fan to try out. I just know it will blow him away of how good a job they did on the 8-bit. Fourth place is taken by Donkey Kong Jr. Up until the new version of Donkey Kong Jr. was released on the C64, that one actually topped the C64 arcade port list, this was by far the best home port of the game. Now, it's a close one though. It does everything as good as the arcade, and it's a total joy to play. Is it as good as the C64 version? Well that's something you will have to decide for yourself, as I can't split the two. Marble Madness is in 3rd position. We saw this previously on the Amiga video, and this one does a great job especially when you think it's only 8-bit. The arcade was not one that floated my boat so I rarely played it on there, but I always played it on the Amiga, and I have to say that this one is very close as being as good as that version. In second place we have Popeye, another old school classic and another game that helped shape Mario games. As this was the reason that Donkey Kong became what it did due to the licensing problems that Nintendo had with the Popeye characters. Anyway, it's a tried and tested formula that just works as you try to save olive oil while avoiding Bluto. To me, this really is as close to arcade perfect as the NES came on any game. And now, in first place we have Contra. How do you top an arcade perfect port like Popeye? That's right, make a game that surpasses the original while keeping enough of the original to make it feel the same. The NES had a few ports that were actually better than the arcade, like Bion and Commando, Vigar and Ninja Gaiden, but in becoming better, they lost the feel of the original game. However, Contra doesn't, it just does everything that the arcade did slightly better. The aspect ratio is a real game changer on this for me though, as it's much better than the vertical aspect in the arcade. Okay that's it for this video and didn't I tell you it was a good one, I really can't believe how good some of these were, and really there were about another 5 or 10 games I could have slotted into this list nicely, 
Let me know in the comments below what your favourite NES parts were. And if you haven't already, please drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more great retro content. Also, if you're able, please follow me on the usual social media. Links are in the description. And if you want to support me on Patreon like these motley crew who are going up the screen right now, get over to my Patreon page. Till next time, Mrs. OSG, signing out.